Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Friedman test using Excel. It's going to be a long video because there is no uh, simple shortcut for it. Uh, in this particular video I'm be using uh, something that's more in line with the original formula of Friedman. And um, I've set up uh, this spreadsheet, there are no formulas in it yet, uh, just to help me along the way. Note that I'm starting here at column AH because on the left we're going to have some, uh, at the moment I have some hidden columns that we'll come across later. And all the way here on the left is my data. Um, so let's get started. The first thing is to remove all cases that do not have a score for each variable. So I've already done that, but what that means is that in this whole data area, um, I shouldn't have any blank uh, value. So if one of these would be missing, you remove the entire case. Um, then step one is actually to rank the scores given uh, for uh, each case. So what that means, or what I mean with that, is to actually rank these. Now this first person actually gave all of them the same score, um, but the next one didn't. So let's see how that works with Excel. You, there's a function called rank.average, a v g. The number is going to be uh, this one, and then the ref order is actually uh, all of uh, these. Now we need to fix the columns because when we copy it to the side, they shouldn't change. So press F4 a few times until the dollar signs are in front of the column letters in this range. You can also just type the dollar signs in. The semicolon or comma depending on your system settings and I want them in ascending order so a 1. Then we hit enter or control enter and then you can simply copy paste this to the side and control V uh, or you can use an autofill handle. We also need to actually copy it down so I'll use the autofill handle now. Oh, that went too far and here we go. It's always good to double check uh, just one of them. In this case, let's see this one, and it seems to be doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So going back to the side now, um, what we need is the second step is the sum of those ranks. So I can simply say equals the sum of, and then I'll go up here, of uh, this one. Uh, I can simply select the entire column because I don't have any other numbers in here. Otherwise, you have to be specific about the range. Close the parentheses and enter or control enter. And I can now actually copy paste this one to the side. And up here, this is actually the formula you've just now done. Capital R equals the sum of the ranks. And we also need to square each result, which equals this one, but then squared. I don't know what the name is of this little symbol up here, but that's the one for a square, or to the power, and then a 2 indicates a square. And then the sum, so you can simply use Alt equals as a shortcut there, and it simply sums up, as you can see, all of those results. Almost there, before we start on the big formula, we need the number of cases, uh, which is simply, uh, in my case, count and then any of the original variables, because they should all be the same. They were all in column A, so 52 cases in my example, and I can actually say equals count A for the number of variables. It's actually 7, I can just type it in, or for example, use these, and then hit enter as well. Now, this big scary looking formula, but we actually have all the uh, values, so it's not that hard. It's simply now 12 divided by, and then it says here, n times k uh, times k plus 1. So let's open the brackets or parentheses. n I have up here times k I have up here times, open another set of brackets, this k plus uh, 1 close both of them, and then multiply by the sum of all those uh, ranks squared, which I already have up here, and then minus 3 times, and then it says n again, so 3 times this one, times open some brackets, or parentheses, k plus 1, and that should be around 27.97 in this example. 
that's the unadjusted test value however uh, we have plenty of ties so we need to accommodate for those uh, the first thing we need is to determine the frequency of each rank um, uh, for each case so how often did each of those ranks actually occur and that's where this unhidden section comes into play uh, for the first column, it's going to be simply counting how many times something occurred. So that's going to be count if, and then the value I want to actually uh, count, uh, or the range where I want to count in, is in here. And then the next thing is the criteria, which in this example will be simply the uh, the first one. Yeah. So that's that one. And this range needs to be blocked by, again, the column number. So using the F4 to get the dollar sign. And there we go. That's the number of times. Oh. Mm. Equals count if. And why is it not show my formula? Uh, am I missing out on something here? No. Uh, not sure why it's not calculating. There's something odd altogether already, but all right, let's try it again. Control copy, control V. Uh oh, my computer seems to be crashing by now. Don't know why. Base values, no, no. Ah, it didn't like the size of my screen apparently. Uh, equals count if. Hmm, not sure what's going on. It's a pity because it's a long video and don't want to restart. Uh, criteria is this one, enter. All right, it seems to be working now again. Sorry about that. Hope you're still with me. And there we go. Copy, paste, uh, paste down. Because this one will work only for the first one. Because the next one is going to be trickier. Um, for the next one we need to accommodate that we already counted one of them so as you can see here I'm going to be using an if with a count if and that's going to work like this equals if and then uh, count if the one we've just done uh, the range is just going to be everything prior to it so there to there if count if this one and then we need to count how often this 4 occurred. If that is bigger than 1, then we don't do anything. Oh, anything. Otherwise, we do count if. And then we're going to count in this range how often uh, this one occurs. And we need to be careful here with all of our ranges and this one needs to be blocked straight from the beginning uh, at least the column and here we need to block both of them and that should actually uh, work uh, count if i2 is greater or greater than zero then it shouldn't do anything. So now I can copy this to the side. It should remain empty because the first one had everything already. And then copy paste it all the way down. And now we have the number of times uh, we have a unique type of a uh, rank. Then we can uh, move on to step five. Don't worry, the rest uh, after this, it becomes slightly easier is to actually uh, cube each result and then subtract it once. So I set up a small area here. So as long as it's not empty, so is if, and then this one equals uh, nothing, then it shouldn't do anything. Otherwise, it should take this value, cube the result, and then subtract it once. Then copy paste this to everywhere. And we have all the results. 
Uh, the zeros are if there's a one, because uh, actually that's not really a tie. And now we can move on to our next result. Add up all the results of that previous st uh, step. So sum, and that's y till a e. That's actually the only number we needed. And now we can use uh, that one to determine our adjustment, which somewhat uh, s uses this formula, which will be 1 minus, and then this uh, sum, divided by, and then open a set of brackets, n times k times, open another set of brackets, k actually squared, minus a 1, and then close everything up. And then finally, the adjustment is simply the unadjusted value divided over the adjustment factor. And we finally get our 49.786. The degrees of freedom would be uh, k minus 1, so that's this one minus 1. And then the chi-square distribution can be used, although uh, Iman and I forgot his name, actually showed that an F distribution might be better, but okay, we'll go with the original chi uh, square uh, distribution right tailed, and that's the new function. Adjusted uh, value, the degrees of freedom, and we can simply close this one and hit enter. So it's uh, quite low, it's uh, 5.19 uh, over. Uh, uh 10 to the power of 9, so um, so quite small, and here we go for equals 1 minus, that's uh, another way of doing the same actually, uh, if you want to make your own life more complicated, is Q, and then the degrees of freedom, and cumulative set to true, you see it's the same result, or the old guy dist, uh, x and the uh, degrees of freedom so this is simply the right uh, the new RT version is actually the guide is old so um, if you like you can go to the home and change this into actually a number with perhaps some more decimals but they're all the same result um, far below the 0.05 threshold so most people would consider this significant so um, in essence, that would mean that these were not evaluated all the same. You can then perform some kind of post hoc test. Uh, I have that described in another video. Uh, but this is how you could perform the whole Friedman test using Microsoft Excel. Sorry for the long video and the hiccup in the, uh, in the middle. But I hope it was all clear to you.